Hi, I'm Lewis and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to analyse Alibaba and work out if their stock is a buy or sell today. We are going to do this by doing fundamental analysis and then using a discounted cash flow model to value their stock. As always, I need to put a disclaimer out there. This video, um, any buy and sell recommendations um, should not be seen as investment advice. And as well as that, this video should be seen as a source of information and education only. If you need any help with, invest in, with any investment at all, uh, get, in con get in contact with a regulated financial advisor. And if you would like to do so, I can put you in contact with one if that's easier. Just email, email me with the contact details down below. So let's get right to it. So Alibaba are a Chinese multinational e-commerce business who focus in e-commerce on, on their multiple websites. Um, cloud computing, uh, technology, and plus many other things. Um, they're one of the biggest companies in China to start with, um, listed on the stock exchange, um, the New York Stock Exchange, these shares. Uh, they're also listed in Hong Kong as well. Um, so when you buy in Alibaba shares, they are in US dollars. Um, what do Alibaba do? Basically, they're basically the Chinese version of Amazon, um, but we take it to the next level. Uh, so they focus in business to business, um, e-commerce, consumer to consumer, so I think of eBay, uh, and then business to consumer as well, so that's basically kind of like Amazon. Um, yeah, so Alibaba have been on my radar for a long time, and I think this video is gonna show to you why I think Alibaba uh, could make a good investment opportunity um, in 2021. So, some fun facts about Alibaba. So, in 2014 when they IPO'd, um, their IPO was the biggest on record when it first happened. I think they raised over 25 billion US dollars on their IPO, which was a, a pretty landmark figure at the time. Um, as well as that, they are one of the largest companies in Asia. Uh, them and Tencent, uh, they are the two biggest ones in Asia. And I think, their, well, what I've just been reading up now, uh, their brand is the sixth biggest um, in the world in terms of brand value. So an absolute Goliath of a business. Um, one of China's golden star, golden star businesses, basically. Um, and yeah, so let's get on to some info about the sales. From what you can see from that pie chart, 84% of their sales come from e-commerce, 10% come from um, cloud computing services, and then the rest make up of other different things. Um, and yeah, from there, where do they make the sales? So the three main ways to make sales is from the three websites, so alibaba.com, um, Tbao and then Tmall as well. Uh, they are the three different platforms where the majority of their sales. Alibaba also have vested interest in financial services, so you may have heard of Ant Financial, uh, one of the biggest um, financial platforms in China. Alibaba have a large investment in them, and when Ant Financial was meant to IPO in November, uh, Alibaba were going to do very well and get a good return on their investment. So yeah, from that chart I've just put on to the video, you can see that um, Alibaba make up a 58% of all e-commerce sales in China, so a very dominant business, and that's what I like to see when investing in companies. I want them to be the leader in their industry, um, and at 58% of all e-commerce sales, that's more than half of all sales through e-commerce um, in China is through Alibaba. So to me, that's an absolutely amazing stat, and it's something which go to, goes towards one of the pros of um, Alibaba for sure. And I think as well what this shows is that if it works in China, why can't it work in Asia as well? Um, so I think Asia is going to be the place to be investing over the next 20, 30 years, mainly due to their economies booming, um, middle class, more people become middle class, uh, more people come out of poverty, um, and just plenty of opportunity. So I think Alibaba could expand into Southeast Asia where their, their economies link with China very well. Uh, so I think Alibaba has a lot of room to grow into over the next decade. Uh, that's why one reason we're very excited about them. The final pro for Alibaba is that the Chinese economy is likely to overtake the US as the biggest economy in the world by 2028. Coronavirus has definitely accelerated this, so I think it could have happened even before. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see, but if the Chinese economy does surpass America, and then you've got the biggest one of the biggest companies in China, to me that's just a recipe for success. The biggest economy in the world, the biggest e-commerce platform in the world, I think they will become. And the future the future is Chinese in terms of where growth is going to be. China, India, Southeast Asia, all of these countries are going to produce massive growth. And as investors, I think we ought to do ourselves a massive favour and put a portion of our funds there. 
Um, it's worth reading about the, the economic growth. Um, India is going to become one of the biggest economies very soon as well. And the 21st century is going to be the year, sorry, the century of Asia, in my opinion. Moving on to the cons. So I, what I like to do is list out pros and cons of all my investments, because by doing that, I can have a good indication of whether it's going to be a good one or a bad one. And I think it gives both, both points of view. So a lot of the time we can have something called confirmation bias where we think we're going to like the investment so we try and agree with every single thing about it but that's very unhealthy uh, with your investments, all types of investments. You need to list the pros and cons of them and then weigh it, literally weigh up if it's going to be worth it or not. So yeah, the cons, monopoly. So the Chinese government are currently investing in Alibaba for being a monopoly um, which has recently caused the stock price to tank quite a bit up to 20%. It's recovered a little bit since then. Um, but yeah, so the Chinese government are basically investigating them to be a monopoly. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, my opinions on that, um, I think being the company biggest, the biggest company which can take on America in terms of take on Amazon and other um, companies, I think Alibaba are a fantastic company. So we'll see if they do get broken up. If they do, bad for investors. So that's why it's a con. Um, also, Jack Ma, the chief executive, like I said in my last video, um, he's currently missing in China and no one knows where he is. Um, so let's see what happens with him um, as well, because um, that will have effects on the stock price in the short term. But that could, as investors, that can give us opportunities to buy for the long term if we see dips. The next con would be competition. So Tencent and JD.com both have um, competition. Um, competition for Alibaba. Um, for, for me, competition is always healthy. If you've got a one company which is just dominating, we can become complacent. Um, I know in China, they're very forward thinking about the about technology and stuff. So I think it just keeps everyone on the toes. Um, but it is definitely a con if, say, JD.com, another big e-commerce e platform, they, if they start taking away sales from Alibaba, um, Alibaba just need to make sure they're doing everything they can to keep their product up to date and and working well. Uh, the last one would be uh, economic growth for China. So they are going to overtake America as the largest, largest econ economy in the world. However, their economic growth is slowing. Uh, it's been at a rate, it's been at a very high rate for the past 30, 40 years, but it's now going slowly but surely going down. So I think it's at six, it was at 6% last year. Still a wonderful figure, but as their economic, economic growth slows, um, you would think Alibaba's growth could potentially be hit. Uh, so we'll have to see with that one. Um, so I'll list the pros and cons there, in my opinion, what Alibaba has to face. So on to the fundamental analysis. So when we analyse a stock, we need to analyse their financial statements to make sure they're up to scratch. Um, it's all good, like in the company, uh, but if it's not up to scratch financially, um, in my opinion, it's not worth investing in it. So let's get to it. Um, I will put a checklist of my, um, I've got a checklist of certain things to look for when investing in a company. Um, for me, it's a case of I want the company to hit as many of these boxes as we can. A lot of the time, what you can face is um, certain business models won't hit certain categories such as profit margins, um, but I'll get into that. So anyway, let's start with the income statement. So what I like to see from um, a company is 40% gross margin, 20% net margin and, I, and what I want is their margins to be better than their competitors because to me if they have better margins than their competitors it's a better business model it's a better business um, so I usually have a 40% gross margin 20% net margin and to me that symbolizes an iconic iconic d dominant business it probably is iconic as well let's be honest and um, so your apples Facebook's um, Coca-Cola's, McDonald's of the world, they are all over 20% net margin, which is a figure I really do look for. So now onto the balance sheet. The balance sheet is basically a sum of all of the company's assets minus liabilities, and then you get the net assets of the company, how much the company is basically worth. Um, one of the main figures I look for is, have their returned earnings increased over the past 10 years, or however long we have the information for? This basically means that is the company's net worth each year increasing? Um, and for me, that's a very simple thing to look at. So if the company's net worth is increasing, you know, bit by bit each year, that's a great sign in my opinion. Um, it means it's making profit consistently. 
um, it's got enough money to pay off dividends or it's got enough money um, to constantly keep growing the company and its balance sheet, that's something I do look for. The next one would be return on capital employed, return on investment, whatever you want to call it, return on equity. Basically this figure is how much profit has a company made compared to how much equity they have. And for this figure, the higher the better. So Alibaba is a de very decent one in terms of this. Um, number three would be long-term debt. So in my opinion, one thing I look for is companies with little or no debt. For me, debt is a sliding scale of risk and put it this way, the more debt a company has, the more risky it is. You can't get away from that, it's simple. So I look for companies with 50% long-term debt over equity or less. Basically that means to me, I think that's enough debt so the company can manage it, so they can outgrow the debt or pay it off within a four year period, which is something I also look for. Because if a crisis happened, can that company pay off its debts um, within a short time frame? And I think four years is a good period to analyse that. The final thing I look for um, in my fund fundamental analysis is on the cash flow statement. So what I like to look for is, does their capital expenditure over their net income, is it between 25 and 50%? So you might think, all oh, right, what's he thinking here? So I like a company to have enough capital expenditure so it's invested in the business. But as well as that, I don't want them to have too much so that they're wasting all their money on constant, constantly, in, constantly improving their processes. Because I think a great business shouldn't have to do this. I think we should have a mix between researching new products and also having, having, having a good enough business model that they don't need to consistently keep buying new machinery, etc. Um, I think it's important because this is one place where cash can consistently go to. And I think that's a bad thing. If, if cash is consistently going into capital expenditure, that's cash which isn't going to the shareholders. So that's a figure I do look out for as well. The last thing I do in my fun fundamental analysis is decide what margin of safety I'm going to use. Essentially what a margin of safety is, is if you predict the stock price, let's say company A of 100, um, I think this company is worth 100 based on my analysis. What you would say is, okay, I want to have a 15% um, margin of safety on there. You're, so, you're basically saying, I, I think it's worth 100, but I'm going to buy at 85 just in case I'm wrong on my analysis, because we can all be wrong on certain investments. Um, you're basically giving you a buffer of protection. Um, so if you think a company's worth $100, 15%, that's minus 15, $85. So I would then choose to buy company A at 15, uh, $85, sorry. From my fundamental analysis from the P&L, balance sheet and cash flows statement, I basically decided that I think fundamentally Alibaba is a great business. So profit-wise, I've got gross margins, net margins above what I want. Balance sheet, it's a strong balance sheet with little debt. And then cash flows, the capex is better than the net income. So basically, let's move on to the discounted cash flow valuation and let's value Alibaba stock. Now on to the discounted free cash flow valuation. So discounted free cash flow is basically a valuation model which is used to value various investments, which can be stocks, real estate, and bonds. They're the main ones which are used for it. Um, I mean, if you want to know more about discounted cash flow, I'll put a link in the, I'll, I'll put a link below for two investing playlists which I would recommend. Um, one is a guy called Jimmy, uh, Learn to Invest. It's one way I've learned to do this process essentially. He has a great YouTube channel and I do admire him a lot so I'll, I'll put his link down below um, and w within his video you'll be able to download spread this spreadsheet I'm about to um, go over. Um, so yeah, discount free cash flow. So basically what we're doing is we are taking all the cash today and into the future and we're discounting at, a pro at an appropriate rate. So what you need to think about is the value of money over time is less and less each year. Um, so what this means is that we have to discount money year on year into the future because it's worth less. In the coming weeks and months, I'm going to be doing more videos on discounted cash flow. So if you don't fully understand it, um, please carry on watching. But I'll, like I say, the link to Jimmy's video will be below, a step-by-step -step guide. But hopefully I can make sense of it in layman's terms. So for this model, my, I am assuming um, an 8.5% return per year. And then after that, a 2.5% return in line with economic growth, um, just general economic growth. Um, so you'll see from um, picture number one, 
but I have got my um, free cash flow figures for Alibaba, which I've taken from uh, Yahoo Finance. So these figures are in Chinese yuan, um, so you'll, you'll, that's why they're quite high. Um, yeah, so they are the free cash flow figures. And then moving on to picture number two. So what I've done here is I've taken analyst estimates from marketscreener.com and I have put the, um, I've estimated the free cash flow figures for the next four years. Uh, then below that, I have assumed a 12% return year on year for the next four years after that. Um, so I believe that's a, a fair assumption for Alibaba, the way they've been growing um, over the past few years and what I predict over the next uh, eight years, these figures for me seem reasonable. So right, let's move on to the what stock price we think Alibaba should be worth. Before I move on to the next bit, I just wanted to say these discounted cash flow figures, they are analyst estimates and you need to also research yourself what you think they could be from their financial statements. Um, it's all good using analyst estimates, but you need to make sure they are reliable figures um, to your best of your ability. And a lot of what the stock price will end up being is to do with what these figures are. So it's really important that you get your growth for it and your cash flow figures spot on um, and be as conservative as possible with your figures. Because if you're not, if you overinflate these figures, you're going to have a higher stock, uh, higher stock price, um, which can damage your returns in the long, long run if you get it wrong. So I always go conservative. Um, you, you might not think 12% each year is not conservative, but if you look over the past five years for Alibaba, they have been growing at a very fast rate. So I think going forward into this decade where I can see massive growth, I think it's, I think it's pretty reasonable. On to the last bit of my valuation. So now onto the good part. So I believe that Alibaba stock today, based on my cash flows and a, an assumed return of 8.5% a year, I think their share price is worth $292. Uh, and then with a 15% margin of safety, that goes down to $255. Um, so yeah, I personally think Alibaba are a buy right now. Um, you need to do your own research, of course, but from the research I've done, I think Alibaba are a fantastic business and I think everyone should have a good look up and do, do your own research on them and um, yeah, see what you think because I think this monopoly talk and the share price fall in recently has been very, um, just a, a big reaction to what I think is not a lot. So I see Alibaba being a great pick over the next decade, uh, but we'll have to see, who knows? Uh, I'm no expert, but like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video and, and yeah, hopefully if you want to learn about, more about Alibaba, you'll do some more research yourself. So if you stuck around this long, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, and if you're interested in more investing content, please subscribe, like, give me a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Share with anyone who you'd think would love, love to see this video. It's gonna be the first of many stock analysis that I do. Um, hopefully it's been good and in depth for you, uh, my thought process. I'm gonna be doing step-by-step -step guides through this model, um, as well as more fundamental analysis stuff because um, I know myself, I haven't found that much stuff on YouTube for it, so hopefully there's a, there's a market out there. And yeah, before I go, if you'd like a, a free share with free trade, um, in, the link, in the link below, um, you will get a free share worth £3 to £200. And then if you're interested in Bitcoin, um, join through my BlockFi link. Uh, BlockFi, you can earn 6% interest on your Bitcoin, so pretty decent really, and I'm a big fan of Bitcoin. Uh, more Bitcoin content coming soon as well. Um, so that's all that done. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon.